Hi, welcome to Macintosh Librarian Labs. Today, Mackie and I are going to talk about the raw SCSI project, which combines the power of a Raspberry Pi with your classic Mac. And not only does it emulate hard drives and CD-ROM drives, but it lets your classic Mac get online. Ooh, emulated CD-ROMs. That means more games. Woo! So let's go ahead and hop into it, and I'll show you what the raw SCSI is all about. So you probably heard of a lot of the other SCSI emulators out there in the market, such as the Blue SCSI or the SCSI to SD. What makes a RAS SCSI different is that you can emulate multiple devices, including CD-ROM drives and even the Dana port Ethernet adapter, which is a SCSI Ethernet adapter that's now emulated in software on the Raspberry Pi. And this will allow your Mac to get online with Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Right now I have my raw SCSI in this nice 3D printed case connected to my Color Classic and I can get online with it using the Ethernet. First Hi-Fi, now Wi-Fi, what will I think of next? Additionally, the raw SCSI can act as a virtual file server for your classic Macs. So if you have a lot of files that you want to share with other classic Macintoshes or even your modern Mac, you can use the raw SCSI as your bridge system to share files between your different Macintoshes. Ooh, that'll be a lot faster than floppy disks. Think of all the games. And that does mean a lot more games, Mackie. Ooh, I'm going to ask Jesse and Tui what they have loaded up on them. So some of y'all might be asking, what exactly is a raw SCSI? And the raw SCSI is this little board right here. Essentially what this board does is it sits on top of your Raspberry Pi, acting like a little hat for the Raspberry Pi, extending the ability of the Raspberry Pi and allows you to connect SCSI either through an external port or through an internal ribbon cable. And this will allow you to connect up to seven virtual SCSI devices, including a mix of CD-ROMs, hard drives, and like I said, an ethernet adapter. There's also, you can emulate magneto-optical disks, zip drives, SCSI floppy drives. There's a whole host of different types of drives that you can emulate, and it's all listed on the um, wiki for this project. So this isn't going to be a full tutorial, I guess, step-by-step -step on how to build the raw SCSI. Since this is an open source project, some of the steps may change in the future. So I don't want to kind of set that in stone in this video. I'd rather have you reference the wiki, which has a really good set of instructions on how to set up raw SCSI and the Raspberry Pi. So here we have a cute 3D printed case for the raw SCSI. This is designed by Tato Fry on the Pressure Prints website. I printed this out in a beige PLA and this design of this case closely resembles the Snow White design language that Apple used back in the 80s and 90s. And this case is the larger case and it has two SCSI ports that allows me to daisy chain extra SCSI devices down the line from this raw SCSI. Okay, so here we have the beautiful raw SCSI. And this one, I didn't solder myself. This one actually was the pre-soldered version. If you go on the raw SCSI wiki, there's links to where you can buy the raw SCSI in either kit form or pre-built. Honestly, since we're dealing with a lot of surface mount uh, soldering, I did buy the kit, but I had the, a really hard time trying to solder these chips and it was kind of a pain in the butt. So I would recommend that you just spend the extra $15 and buy the pre-built kit if you can. But if you want to learn and have fun building your kit, go ahead and buy the kit yourself. So this version of the Ross SCSI, I have mounted an extra SCSI header on the top of the Ross SCSI, and that sits into the ribbon cable slot and one of the issues that I ran into with the raw SCSI is you have to make sure you have these jumpers over here with this captain tape uh, set to the right position. I have mine set to on. Both of them are switched to on. I think by default they're both switched to off, but these are the terminator switches. And on my Mac, I since this is the last device on the SCSI chain, I have to mark that 
as on so that I terminate the SCSI line. If you want to know more about termination, you can look at the wiki page for the raw SCSI. They kind of go into detail on how termination works and what settings you should use for your computer. So let's go ahead and put this all back together and I'll show you how it works on my classic Macintosh. So because this is a female port connector on the back of the Ross SCSI, it's not a direct connection to your Macintosh. And you can wire it internally if you want to, but I want mine to be external because I want this Ross SCSI to be on all the time so that it can act as a file server. So if you want to install it internally, you can use the ribbon cable here and use a Molex to USB-C or micro USB adapter and supply power to the Raspberry Pi. Either way, you still have to supply power to the Raspberry Pi. There's not enough power off the SCSI bus to power a Raspberry Pi. It requires like 2.5 to 3 amps, depending on which Raspberry Pi you have. And since I'm running Raspberry Pi 4, I think the requirements are 3 to 3.5 amps. But yeah. And with a faster Raspberry Pi, you're going to get faster I.O. speeds when it comes to writing to the disk and doing just general SCSI I.O. So reading, writing to the disk, reading, writing to your Ethernet device will be faster with the faster Raspberry Pi. OK, like I said, this isn't going to be a full tutorial, but I do want to show you how you set up the Macintosh file side of things and how to install uh, System 7 on the raw SCSI. Since it doesn't really go over too much detail on the wiki about that part, but this is kind of jumping in, assuming you already have your Roscozy set up, you already installed the Roscozy software using the instructions on the wiki. And oh, I recommend reading about easy install sh, which is a script that the Roscozy team built that helps you install a lot of the features pretty quickly without having to use too much command lines. Let's hop into the Mac and I'll show you the web interface for the raw SCSI. Okay, so here we have the raw SCSI interface. This is a web server that's running on the Raspberry Pi itself. And using the Raspberry Pi web interface, we can attach up to seven devices to our classic Macintosh. I already have a lot of preloaded ISOs that I already moved to the raw SCSI. But what you first want to do, especially if you're starting off with installing a new OS, I would recommend installing the OS right here on the actual Mac itself. I think Steve from Mac 84 had a separate video for the raw SCSI setup where he had issues trying to set up the raw SCSI hard disk image on an emulator. So I went ahead and just ran the Mac OS 7.6 ISO on the actual hardware itself. Let's go ahead and mount Mac OS 7.6 on SCSI ID 6 as a virtual SCSI CD drive. I'm going to click Attach. And I got this ISO from Macintosh Garden. Some critical downloads that you would like to get to help you set up your raw SCSI on your classic hardware would be the raw SCSI software page on Macintosh Garden. I went ahead and downloaded this raw SCSI Bootstrap version 3. And this is a hard disk image that has a lot of drivers and tools that will make your life a little easier when you're setting up your raw SCSI. And this is all linked on the GitHub page, and I'll put a link to this page on the description as well. So I went ahead and downloaded all the files. Let's go ahead and extract them. So what we want to do with these files is we can upload them to our raw SCSI by just dragging and dropping the files to the section of our web page. So let's get the raw SCSI Bootstrap v3. So let's create a new hard disk to actually install our Mac OS 7.6 onto. And the amazing part about the raw SCSI web interface is that you don't have to mess with the command line to do all this. You can do it all easily through the UI on the web page. So let's create a new drive, call it MacHD76 uh, new. And let's go ahead and make it a generous, let's make it a thousand megabytes. All right, and we'll see at the top that it created MacHD76new.hta. So let's go down here and we'll see our image, 1000 megabytes. Let's mount it as SCSI ID 0 and attach it. I'm going to go ahead and save this configuration as default. If you click Save on default, when you reboot your Raspberry Pi, 
these are the hard drives that will be connected to your classic Mac. Otherwise, you have to, once you reboot your Pi, you'd have to reset up everything. So just make sure you click save if you make any changes that you want to keep. All right, so now that we have the Ross SCSI web interface set up, let's go ahead and turn on our Color Classic and see if everything works. Okay, so right now it's actually booting off of the CD drive, the virtual CD drive that we have the 7.6 install ISO mounted, as you can see with a special CD wallpaper. So what we want to do is let's go ahead and use the other hard drive image that we mounted, the bootstrap image. And this has some really nifty tools in it that will allow us to scan the SCSI drives to see if our new blank virtual hard drive was detected. Awesome. So we'll see that we have a SCSI disk uh, 1020, which is, I believe, is the gigabyte virtual SCSI disk that we created. We also have the other SCSI hard drives that we mounted, as well as the CD-ROM drive that we have. The lining to format the new gigabyte hard disk that we created earlier on the web interface for the raw SCSI. Let's mount it as an Apple drive and give it a cute little icon. Let us choose a cute icon. Well, that one actually looks kind of like a Ross Guzzi, so let's go ahead and use that guy. There we have our Mac HD 761 is now available for us to install Mac OS on. So let's go ahead and do that. So it took about 20 minutes to install System 7 from a virtual CD onto a virtual hard drive, which isn't too bad. But yeah. So to get your Mac online, you need to install some key pieces of software on System 7, and that is Open Transport 1.3, as well as the drivers for your virtual SCSI Ethernet adapter. And if you want file share, you have to install the Apple File Share protocol. And these should all be included in the Bootstrap disk image that's on the wiki. So first, let's install Open Transport. And this will give our Macintosh uh, TCP IP access on our system. So let's reboot. And the next step will be to install the drivers for the DanaPort SCSI Ethernet adapter. Ah, but before we install the drivers, we actually have to jump on to the raw SCSI web interface and attach a Dana port Ethernet adapter first. So let's go ahead and hop over to the web interface and do just that. So before we set up the virtual Dana port Ethernet adapter, we have to set up port forwarding on our Raspberry Pi. And the way the Dana port SCSI Link Ethernet adapter works is essentially like this. You have your Mac connect through SCSI to the Raspberry Pi, and that does all the Dana port emulation and it sends it over a virtual network device to your ethernet cable to the internet. So we need to set up the raw SCSI bridge. So what you would need to do is follow the wiki. And it's relatively easy thanks to the easy install.sh script using option six for wired and option seven for Wi-Fi. So this makes your life a lot easier. Use option number six to connect a SCSI bridge over Ethernet. And this is what I would recommend doing. And once you do that, you can also set up the Apple File Share server or a web proxy server. I've already gone ahead and set up the Apple File Share server. I've yet to set up the web proxy server because I've honestly just been using frogfind.com. Okay, so once you have your raw SCSI bridge installed using easy install the SH, Let's go ahead and create a virtual Ethernet device. I don't want a static IP. I want this to be assigned DHCP for my router. So let's do the SCSI ID 6 and make sure it's on our Ethernet port since I'm connected with my Raspberry Pi through the Ethernet and attach it. And if everything works, you'll see that a Dana port has been attached to SCSI ID 6. And we'll see right here, the Dana SCSI link is attached to ID 6. You click Info you'll see that it's attached to Ethernet port zero. Okay, so now that we have the Roscozy bridge installed on our Pi and the virtual Ethernet adapter on our Raspberry Pi installed, 
we can go ahead and turn on our Mac and install the drivers. All right. So let's hop back into the Bootstrap folder, go into Stuff, and let's go into the Network Tools. So the reason why we set up the virtual SCSI device first is so that the Mac can detect the data port. And without that, it won't let you install the drivers. So let's go ahead and click Install. And this is an error that the wiki says that you'll receive. I'm not sure what this error means, but we just click continue and it continues. Cool. So let's go ahead and reboot now that we've installed the driver. Okay. So let us go to control panel and TCP IP. and we want to make it active when we close the control panel, go ahead and connect via alternate ethernet. And this means that we're connected through the Dana port SCSI adapter. And let's go ahead and exit out of here and save changes. Okay, here we have iCab, which is an old web browser, uh, version 2.99. And let's go to frog find.com and see if we can go online. Awesome. So it looks like our Dana port ethernet adapter works and we're able to go to frog find, which is an awesome little website made by Sean from action retro. And it's kind of my go to website for all my 68 K Macs since it renders the website in an easily readable way that an old browser like iCab 2.99 can understand. So now that we have internet connectivity, let's go ahead and set up the Apple file share server so that we can actually transfer files from our Raspberry Pi directly to our classic Macintosh. Okay, let's hop over to the Mac and I'll show you how to set up the file share stuff on the Raspberry Pi. And again, just like before, you use the easy install to SH and this makes life a lot easier um, you would use option number eight, and this installs the Apple file share server or the Netatalk server on your Raspberry Pi. And this is what allows us to share files to our classic Mac. Once you have that installed, you can actually just drag and drop files from the web interface and you can share files directly to the share. If you use a program like Cyberduck and you SSH into your Raspberry Pi, you can actually transfer files pretty easily this way as well. When you install using the easy install to SH, it should automatically create an AFP share folder. And here is where I have a lot of different files that I can share with my classic Mac. But in order for our Mac to get access to these files, we need to install some software on our classic system. Okay. So let's go to our handy dandy bootstrap folder and install the Apple share client sit file. And what Apple share client does is allows us to connect to TCP IP Apple shares. Awesome. So we've installed it successfully. Let's go ahead and reboot and see if we can connect to the file share. Okay. Now that we're back, let's hop into the chooser and see if we can connect to the file share. Good. So we have this Apple share with a little globe on it. This means we can connect to an IP based server. I had trouble getting the file server to show up automatically. So I would type in the server IP address and this is going to be the IP of your Raspberry Pi. Okay. So once you type in the IP and everything gets connected, you would choose Apple standard VAMs. And here is where you will type in the username and password for your Raspberry Pi. I went ahead and created a new user on the Raspberry Pi so that I don't have to give root access essentially to the files that are on my Pi. And we'll see these little connectivity arrows in the corner that should mean we're connected to the Apple file share server. Awesome. Here we go. We have the Pi file server, which is the Raspberry Pi running the Netatalk um, software that allows us to run a file share. So 
here's all the files that I've already dumped onto the file share. I have Christmas and Lemmings, which is an awesome Christmas puzzle game that is perfect for the holidays. Woo! Christmas Lemmings? That's one of my favorites. We'll play Christmas Lemmings later, Mackie. Well, I wanted to blow up some lemmings. I went ahead and created a folder that has the Rapid CD installation drivers. Ooh, I think even I could do this. So let's set Ultimate Doom and attach it to SCSI ID 4 right here. And then let's go ahead and try another, let's try Crystal Crazy as SCSI ID 3. And we see here that we still have the Dana port SCSI link set up as SCSI ID 6. Let's go ahead and save everything just to make sure everything works. And let's turn on our Mac and see if those drives are connected. Ooh, that's awesome. So now that we've rebooted, I see that we have Ultimate Doom and Crystal Crazy mounted on our desktop. And one last thing I wanted to show you was that you can actually use a web browser on your classic Mac to edit the parameters of the raw SCSI using the web interface. So let's go ahead and launch iCAD and let's see if we can connect to our Raspberry Pi. Awesome. All right, so we see here we have our main hard drive that we have mounted. We have Ultimate Doom, we have Crystal Crazy, it's all here. So we can modify and edit our raw SCSI all through a 68K based web browser. So that's, I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, so I lied. There's one more last, last thing that I wanted to show you. And that is using SSH from your classic System 7 Macintosh using a program called SS7 or SS Heaven. Anyway, it's an SSH program for System 7. And we can type in the address of our Raspberry Pi. Awesome. So as you can see here, I am connected to the Raspberry Pi using SSH on a System 7 Macintosh. So technically, if you were in a world where you didn't have any modern Macs and you only had 90s Macintoshes, you can use a program like SS7 to connect to your Raspberry Pi and make all the configuration changes you needed. So I think this is pretty cool. I remember SSH from the last Labs video. That's when we made a mini Mac that I was traveling all over in. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little overview of the raw SCSI. I think it's a really awesome project. And if you're into Raspberry Pis and setting up systems and installing Linux and things like that, I think the raw SCSI is definitely something that you should get. It kind of crosses the worlds between Raspberry Pi tinkering and classic Mac tinkering into one project. Not only does it let you emulate CD drives and hard drives, it lets you get online, which is, I think, the selling point of the raw SCSI. I know it's kind of in beta and it's still in development, but I'm sure there'll be more efforts and more emulated SCSI devices out in the future. So I'm excited to see what the raw SCSI project holds for us in the future. More games, more games. I want to play more games. I want to get some games online and then play some more games. Bye everybody. Goodbye everyone. Keep checking back for new videos. Christmas Lemmings time. Just gonna load this up right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, level one. What we got here? Hmm. Got a bunch of blockers. Not need those. Ooh, bombers. I guess I can put one uh, here. Here, 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 here. Eh. Oh, this is the mute button. <laughs> Maggie, what are you doing? <laughs> Christmas Lemmings. Oh.